Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. Dr. Mike Kleinhens is here. We're going to talk about pain control with animal husbandry and veterinary procedures and so much more. He's with Kansas State University. Stay tuned. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We have Dr. Mike Kleinhens here. Dr. Kleinhens is a, an assistant professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And I've gotten to know him and work with him over many years uh, and just really excited to have you on the show and have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dan. You bet. So when we talk about uh, pain control mm -hmm. in cattle, the first thing people go to is that, well, that's not the way my granddad taught me how to do it, right? We oh, all yeah. we all get that as a veterinarian. Yep. And, and I, you know, I said, well, you know, we didn't used to use Novocaine to pull teeth either. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, I always have an opening slide, you know, of a guy at Civil War Battlefield says, sorry, Jeb, the only thing I have left is O'Doul's. You know, we don't use sticks and jigs of whiskey anymore in <laughs> sur surgery. So um, we're beyond that. Um, and, you know, Kind of back to the history, you know, this was something that wasn't even really taught in, when I went to vet school. Right. And I was in two, early 2000s. Um, you know, something's really gained traction. And I think it's a consumer-driven type thing. Um, you know, the consumers want to know that those animals are treated very well. Um, and we're doing everything we can to provide that comfort and animal well-being to those cattle underneath their care. Yeah. And, you know, the, it, it's consumer-driven. But it's kind of like everything you, you start out, they kind of give you the jumping off point, but then you start saying, yeah, this, this really was a problem. Yeah. This, this really was something that, that yeah. is fixing now economically and bringing value to our cow calf operations and feedlots. Exactly. And you know, one of the things I get is, you know, you kind of give them the nudge to do it and they try it and then they come back and say, oh, wow, you know, those cattle, after we did that, you know, dehorning, after we'd castrate them. You know, they just looked a lot better and those good cattle guys they pick up on that um and they just they just that's their biggest thing they say is those cattle just look better yeah and there are added benefits you know reduce stress uh those cattle seem to come up the bunk and eat a little bit better uh they seem to be healthier at the end of the day and so it's just a very you know good way to provide um a, a benefit to those cattle i always like it when the calves get up and they go over and nurse Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, they, yeah. they, they, we just had a little bit of disruption in their day. Yep. And yeah. and we took care of it and and we, we got done what we need to get done. Yes. And the calf didn't suffer. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, especially with like dehorning, um, you know, when guys start to use local anesthetics and stuff like that, the procedure goes so much easier. I mean, it's, they don't, they're not moving as much, you know, and, and it's just a much better environment for all involved, I think. And I think the same way with castration and things like that when we provide those analgesics to those animals. Yeah, I, I can only imagine that, you know, we, we tend to focus on the impact it has on the animals and we forget about our backs and getting kicked and, yeah, getting, exactly. and just struggling and fighting. So it makes your day go better. It too. does. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, 
So would, you know, the main issue or the main points of emphasis for pain control then would be? Ben the benefits of the animal, uh, you know, obviously reduce stress. Uh, so that's been one that's been over and over in research. Uh, those cattle or given analgesics have reduced cortisols and things like that, which is a biomarker for stress. Average daily gain tends to be a little bit higher um, in those cattle. Some new research came out that really supports that. And then, you know, in general, they're overall healthier and things like that. So perfect. Well, it's a wide open field. You're at the forefront of it. <laughs> and uh, so this is great to have one of the, the experts here in the United States on pain control and beef cattle production, uh, veterinary medicine, Dr. Mike Kleinhens. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with Dr. Mike. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Zuprevo.com. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alert is on Farm test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alert is on farm test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Kleinhens. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences at the College of Veterinary Medicine here at Kansas State University and is filling a role in beef cattle production medicine where he is doing research uh, on on many different things from from cow calf to feedlot and uh, one of the the stars of k-state cvm um, when we talk about uh, pain control i guess let's get into some of the a couple of the the you know dehorning and castration so let's start with the dehorning what are we what are we recommending? What are, what are what's the procedures? So my recommendation, uh, regardless of how dehorning is done, so even paste dehorning, which has always been kind of thought of as not painful, it is pretty. It's actually pretty painful. It shows. Um, it's it's a, burning. It's it's a yeah. It's a caustic <laughs> burn. Uh, so it's not a hot burn, but it's a caustic burn. Um, so both of them, I like to provide what's called a local anesthetic. So there's a technique you can use where you can put lidocaine. So it's a similar drug you get to the dentist when they numb your teeth. Yep. Um, it'll numb that horn area. Um, and when they, you do that, it uh, numbs that horn area and it makes the procedure go a lot better. Uh, you know, they don't tend to feel it as much uh, and they, it just makes it go a lot smoother. How uh, much of the lidocaine do you have to put? So for a smaller calf, you need about four cc's per side. So eight mLs. When you get to bigger cows um, that are truly dehorned, you probably need closer to 10 per side. So um, it's a, a little bit more, but it's kind of titrate to effect type of a thing. Yep. And the procedure to, to numb that area is actually really easy to learn. Uh, it's, you know, a couple of little steps, anatomical landmarks, uh, the eye and the horn, and then a frontal ridge, which is a little bony piece you can feel with your finger real easy. In between there and you're done uh, so it's a really easy thing you can learn uh, as a veterinarian you can teach your producers to do it you can pretty much teach anyone how to do it um, so that's what i recommend for dehorning number one is a local anesthetic uh, and then to couple that with an NSAID, so a non anti-inflammatory drug, yep. which is on uh, cattle it's your banamines uh, ketoprofens meloxicam are the three we have uh, we, and a lot of research on um, for humans, it'd be like an ibuprofen, essentially, yep. uh, that kind of a medication. So um, research has shown if you 
couple that local anesthetic with an NSAID, you get a more robust um, analgesic or pain control um, for that animal. And probably some longer duration. Yes, exactly. They decreases inflammation. Longer duration, decreased inflammation, things like that. So it's great. Yeah, we're learning so much more about how to use them properly. That's, yeah, exactly. Uh, and we're learning when to use them, how to use them, you know, and timing of those drugs uh, really makes a big difference. So then when we slide around to the back end of this, bull i was yeah. about said steer gonna be steer gonna be steer. <laughs> um when we slide around there um what are we what are some of the techniques or so i like to do um a, a block of the scrotum itself so you, you can take a syringe of lidocaine uh put some in the east spermatic cord uh, that'll numb the testicles and then you put some in what's called the median raphe which is that center line of that scrotum uh, and that'll numb the rest of that scrotum and make that whole area. Numb. So you don't have to do the old circumferential. No, no, you don't. No. With, when we started doing this, yeah, that's what we were doing. Exactly. But, but now you can just go straight into the straight middle. into that median okay. raphe, and that'll numb that bottom portion of that scrotum. Uh, Perfect. Really nicely, and then couple that always with what an NSAID. So I, meloxicam, transdermal bandamine, something along those lines. Perfect. So um, we have a little bit of time left. How? What volumes are they? So for that one, I use about 12 mLs of lidocaine. So you put about four in each spermatic cord, and then you have just a little bit left over to go in that median raffe, and you have enough. Perfect. Yeah. Incredible information. Um, glad that you're working on this for our industry. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about some more with pain protection in calves with Dr. Michael Kleinhans. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of ResFlor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at ResFlorGold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Dr. Nell's here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, or find it at drnells.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Kleinhens. Dr. Kleinhens serves as an assistant professor and veterinarian at Kansas State's uh, College of Veterinary Medicine in the Department of Clinical Sciences. Uh, and uh, you know here at, at k-state uh, lots of things going on all things beef right usually yeah <laughs> well, it's important to our state it is very important yeah, yeah. So. and uh and uh you know as we start to talk about you know you've done just a great job of why we do it how we do it and now what are some of the regulatory things that when it comes to these products? Um, so currently here in the United States, um, unfortunately, we don't have anything approved by the Food and Drug Administration for analgesic for castration and dehorning. Uh, we do have one product on the market, uh, but that's a limited focus on pain associated with foot rot. Um, and so um, with all these products, we're going to need a veterinarian and a veterinarian prescription to get these products and use these products appropriately. And, and with these, you're, which products are we uh, talking about? So uh, it'd be all of them. So actually lidocaine requires a prescription, uh, meloxicam uh, requires a prescription, um, and then banamine and ketoprofen off-label would need your prescription for those uses. Okay. So... So anything that we're going to do, work with your local veterinarian, Absolutely. get a prescription, Absolutely. work through the procedures probably, yep. and and uh, and then get off and They are run. a great resource for you. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 So once we get that established and we get the extra label drug use uh, prescription, we're now going to be, you know, local analgesia is going to be from the lidocaine. Yes, sir. And then the the non-local or general is going to be from your NSAIDs. Yes, that's correct. So we use those. Do you ever um, come back with a second dose or or come back? Is there any research on, on that? There is limited research on coming back with the second dose. Um, the hard part is convincing guys to bring them up that second time. Yep. Uh, 
Meloxicam, which is a um, drug, um, it has a longer profile, so it lasts longer in the system. Um, and depending on the age of the animal, those younger animals with a castration, you can get two to three days of analgesic out of one dose. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's it provides, a... yeah. Um, the work we've done, actually, we've done some work with the transdermal banamine product, and it shows about two days of analgesic use, appropriate analgesic use as well. So. Well, that's that's very encouraging because, you know, you start to think about the uh, the Tylenol or, or Advil yeah. analogy, and I'm like, six hours, and it's... It's gone. Yeah, yeah. but and, if we're talking two or three days, now we're, yeah, we're and, really doing some and good. And some work we just actually published is aspirin and dairy cows, and we found it don't, doesn't really work for more than four hours. So I wouldn't even, I would highly discourage use of aspirin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we've worked on these products, but you also are working on on some some outside the box <laughs> thinking type products as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so another line of research we have is um, working with industrial hemp and cannabinoids in cattle. Um, and so it's an area uh, I always get snickered at, um, but you know, really leading the charge and providing some good scientific data to that um, industry. It's showing promise. Uh, we have some data to support it does actually decrease stress in these cattle. Um, and we're, we've applied it to some research that's hopefully going to be coming out later this year or in transportation and things like that where we've seen some positive benefits there. Hopefully we don't have a... Uh... Uh, positives on our random drug screenings. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's another area we're highly working in is to make sure we use this appropriately in food animals. And uh, that data is uh, on the on the burner. Uh, yeah. It's just got to finish getting cooked. So well, well, I think that when you look at you know bringing a whole suite at the time post procedure and now maybe some more generalized things. Exactly. You're going to have a whole suite of things to manage pain and stress. Again. That's the hope. That's the hope. That's enough. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up on pain mitigation in cattle with Dr. Mike Klein-Hens here at Kansas State University. We're the Iowa State University Beef Teaching Farm, and we're grateful to be part of an industry that's built on relationships. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. The most stressful part of life cycle of a calf is the ride here, whether it's a two hour ride or it's a 24 hour ride. I mean, we kind of treat everything like the higher risk cattle. We always have somebody right there at the loadout, pinning cattle, getting counts on cattle. It's just consistently doing the little things right, whether it's clean water, fresh feed, clean pen, clean bunk apron. We try to do the little things right, whether it's from low stress cattle handling, animal welfare, how we work with the cattle every single day. You know, that's something we really focus on. Our cowboys work directly with our veterinarians. You know, there's, and our guys, they do a great job. Give them a few days to kind of acclimate, settle down a little bit. That gives us a period what we know what we're working with and how we're gonna handle them at the shoot when we come to process them. We don't process till day 10, 14 or so. And we found better luck with that just because we know what we're working with. 
and it seems like if they're gonna fall apart on you or you know start having some BRD issues you'll find it within that 10 to 14 day period and mother nature as we know it 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 can throw a curveball at us anytime so you never want to get comfortable and we're using the stimulator now for a vaccine and they don't go through a harsh sweat or anything. Blends mix is really nice. Cattle look great afterwards and every day is a challenge. But it's nice knowing that we can rely on a, a good vaccine kind of protect us against what Mother Nature or any stressors that they throw at us. This industry, it, it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, Everybody plays a part, and uh, we expect them to do their jobs, but also we expect you know, the, the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too. And I think these Bimeda products, they're proving that they're doing the job for us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Kleinhens. Dr. Kleinhens is an assistant professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. He's a leading expert in beef cattle production medicine and in, in this topic of, of pain mitigation and has done a ton of research. And, and um, you know, we, we tend to look at our two that the consumer looks at, castration and dehorning, but there's some other things out there, pain mitigation, that we could do some real benefits for cattle, such as foot rot lameness and, and uh, you know, and others. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we have the benefit, like foot rot lameness, we have a benefit. We have a labeled drug for that, for pain control. So yeah. that research has been done. It's been proven. The FDA has approved it, you know. So those that is an actual gold star um, for analgesic use, you know, foot rot lameness in those feedlot cattle. Um, you know, other lamenesses as well, you know, just generalized, you know, injury lameness, things like that, you know, provide those analgesic drugs to those cattle. Um, and there's a suite of work out there that supports that. Um, some work we've done uh, here at Kansas State as well as up at Iowa State. Yep. Um, and we know the drugs work. Um, it's just a matter of how you give them the dose to use and appropriate withholds and things so, like that. So when you, when you use those products, you're using it at the time of therapy? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've already got them in the chute. Exactly. We, and, we know we got them up there. They, they need to be looked at for some reason. Let's get them some analgesics to go on board. And then, and then the one we, I mean, we've used uh, flunixin for years or banamine um, for bovine respiratory disease. But, you know, what is some of the research behind that show? Yeah. So some of the research, um, my former PhD student, Mary Martin, uh, yeah. did as part of her uh, work, uh, looked at BRD and pain. So we wanted to see if there was actual a pain component to bovine respiratory disease and specifically pleuritis. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, her work shows that we did see some changes in the way those cattle move, uh, the way they, you know, kind of their sensitivity of, over the thoracic area um, and things like that. So we do find some correlations to pain biomarkers and BRD uh, and re somewhat resolved with, uh, you know, a dose of an NSAID. So. Well, and we see, you know, some big improvements. You know, we, we started looking at, you know, because it's an antipyretic bringing down body temperature. Yep. And when we get those calves that temp 105 or above or 106 or above, uh, just giving them a relief from that, yeah. high temperature yeah. uh, can really have an impact on our case fatality rates. Exactly. And getting those cattle to feel better. They want to go to the bunk. They want to, they want to move. I mean, they want, want to be cattle. Um, and anything we can do to make them relieve any pain or discomfort we can, I think we should. Yep. So, so in general, when, when you go out and you talk with farmers, ranchers, and, and people, what's, what's kind of the reception or perception or, you know, you're seeing more and more people uh, pick up this practice, aren't you? Yeah, um, we're, a lot of more people are picking it up. Um, you know, the dairy industry, they were moved into that with the farm program. Uh, and yeah. so that was a very, a very fortunate thing. And so those conversations are being had now and people are picking up on it and going with it. Uh, we don't have that on the beef side yet, um, but, you know, with that on the dairy side, I think we can be proactive and get the word out, you know, that these things work, they're available. They can be used um, and that, you know, it's, let's do the best for the cattle. 
Yeah, best for the cattle. They perform better, less sickness, less problems. Exactly. And better safety for us. That's exactly right. Well, I sure appreciate you being on the show. And thanks for having me. It's great to have Dr. Mike Klein-Hens here at Kansas State University. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to find out what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Klein-Hens, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Valley Vet Supply sees the hard work and effort of you and your animals to achieve your goal of being a champion. And we're here to help along the way. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you.